all diagonal matrices. And so here's just like a very simple example where you can see that these quantities, uh, so the, the chi bar star, what you get after uh, you know, doing the optimal rescaling, can be inf arbitrarily far off from what would happen if you didn't do this. Right, so if, if you can imagine you take you know, the kernel of this matrix, so it's just you know, m comma minus one. Um, so uh, I, mean, I think it's easy to believe that this is the only uh, you know, solution, this is the solution space of the kernel, right? And you can see here that the lifting cost is large, right? Because one star is, is there, and to lift one star, I have to pay m, right? Or m times one. Okay, so clearly, you know, the lifting cost in this subspace uh, is going to be big if you choose the first coordinate. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Um, but like clearly you can, if, you're, if I'm allowed to apply diagonal scaling, you can sort of check that this is the diagonal scaling that works. I can rescale this subspace so that it's just the subspace spanned by the one one vector. And now like, we should also believe that the lifting cost here will be small because I, you know, I start with one here and I pay one to lift it. Um, so, so, you know, this quantity can be infinitely better uh, than, than uh, the initial chi bar. Um, and we'll actually see, I think, I mean, uh, uh, not only can it be infinitely better, but it will turn out that this is actually, yeah, it, this is actually the better behaved quantity than this. Uh, and and we, will, we will see this uh, a little bit later. So, in essence, the open problem was to find uh, an interior point method that, uh, that is sort of invariant under these three scalings, or to find an interior point method uh, that just depends on this print. Okay? And this was, a, I, I think, first posed up by, uh, as an open problem by uh, uh, Montero and Sushiya. Uh, and uh, uh, there, there was a lot of like, very nice uh, kind of you know, progress uh, on, this, on this problem. Um, where, uh, I mean, you get results that are very, very close, but not quite there. Um, so in particular, if you're not interested in, in following the path all the way until the end, but you're sort of, you, you want to make, uh, uh, let's say, very substantial progress, uh, so you want to move like within some notion of epsilon till the end, what you can show is that the, the most, one of the most standard kind of frameworks for uh, uh, in, interior point methods, uh, and this is an instantiation of it, so it's called the MTY predictor corrector method, um, like gets the right dependence, uh, but then gets like a log log dependence on the error. Okay, so usually you would expect a log one over epsilon uh, dependence for interior point methods, and here they sort of show that, uh, uh, you know, in reality, if you take out if you, you can sort of rip out uh, some, some complexity of the method that you charge to chi bar star, and what's left over, you only have like a log log dependence. Um, so that was sort of close, but, but uh, you know, not quite there. And then the uh, Montero Tsushi Aguilan showed that uh, you can get exactly this dependence, but the steps of the interior point method that you need to take uh, cannot be uh, implemented in um, strongly polynomial time. So it's, uh, in, in essence, you should think of every step of an interior point method will correspond to solving a linear system of equations. Um, and uh, uh, they cannot uh, uh, take once, in, in this method you need many uh, uh, solutions to the linear system. And so, and so many that it depends on the complexity of the, the right hand side. Of the, uh, so quick, quick question. Originally in the chi measure, we were basically looking at the subset of coordinates that yes. we were lifting. Now you have these additional diagonal matrices. Yes. So what is the search space? How large is the search space for this diagonal? I mean, it's the whole space of diagonal matrices that you need to. But you, we, we'll, we'll see. So I mean, what I, what I <coughs> will get to is, is the, the version of the, the uh, another version of the, um, this uh, an approximate, let's say, version of this uh, uh, parameter, where it becomes much, much clearer what you should do. Like uh, yes. Okay. 
So in terms of uh, our, 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 our results, uh, we essentially like answer Montero and Sushi's question, and we also improve uh, the running time. Um, and one interesting thing is that, uh, uh, like from the combinatorial perspective, so we have a combinatorial algorithm um, that uh, uh, can actually compute this uh, nearly nearly optimal uh, diagonal matrix. Um, but what is it, what's interesting about our notion of approximation is that the sort of approximation factor we get depends on the quantity that we are approximating. So we, we can compute an optimal, uh, nearly optimal uh, transformation. Uh, so like this D that we compute, the best it could possibly get is this. Uh, and instead we get uh, an approximation factor that is uh, proportional to uh, chi bar star. Which in particular should tell you that this should give you no information about the size of chi bar star. Uh, um, but uh, yes, so it is a, an approximation result, uh, and this like bypasses like uh, Tunsell's hardness of approximation because our approximation factor depends on the matrix itself. Okay. Well, what's important about this is that if you know this result, you don't actually have to do anything other than apply our rescaling and plug it into the Vavasi Sinier algorithm. It's not like the it's like the simple cheap solution of getting a paper. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we made it a 50-page paper because we, we, we felt like doing more than that. Um, but uh, uh, if, if, we, if we stopped there, it would have been a 20-page paper. Um, and uh, uh, because, of course, like the moment, you know, th this is your upper bound on uh, chi bar of the rescaled matrix, you, you're, you depend on the logarithm of this. So like, this is like, you know, three times worse than what it was at the beginning. Okay, so you, you basically don't lose anything. Um, and also, the, it turns out that this parameter allows us to uh, approximate chi bar uh, for any matrix A um, up to the size of this parameter. Okay. And do you have a result showing that it's hard to do better than this? I don't have a result that says it's hard to do better than this. Um, that would actually be interesting. If like if somehow you should if one should expect this to be sort of the limit that would be very interesting. Um, yeah, actually very interesting. I didn't think about that. Well, when uh, you write in the second uh, um, inequality, is it it's chi a or chi a b? Yeah. So this so uh, what you can you can do two things. One, you can approximate chi a, mm -hmm. but the approximation factor is chi bar star, is proportional to chi bar star. Uh, and so you can either, I mean, you can do, I mean, both algorithms sort of are, are roughly the same thing. Uh, in the first case, you're trying to find the optimal transformation that, uh, you know, brings the matrix so that its chi bar uh, value is as small as possible. And the second one says, I give you any matrix, like, how big is chi bar? Uh, I guess I should have put a bar here. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. But, but this inequality works also for chi bar A B D, so it isn't the square better than the Q bar is T very large. Uh, right, right. So 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 here it would be this is like n chi bar star squared times chi bar star. So it's like the you can think of this is the approximation factor, but in this case it's like your you multiply the approximation factor by itself, so that's why you get the Q. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, uh, try and say yeah one more interesting thing. So one one could wonder like how good these methods could ever possibly be, uh, and there is like a really amazing result of uh, you know, the uh, four authors who showed that if you are following the sort of standard central path. If you used a different barrier, you would get different central paths where the result doesn't apply. But it, or it's not clear that the result applies. But if you use the standard central path, um, you can find uh, uh, an, uh, LPs where um, any, any method that follows this path using piecewise linear segments needs to take two to the dimension many steps. Um, so, and, and 
you know, it's a difficult paper to read because they they like tropical geometry, uh, <laughs> and uh, and they think very differently from at least me. But so, sorry, due to the dimension instance. Yes. But we have polynomial time path following method. Uh, yes, polynomial in what? <laughs> the dimension definitely. No, no, it's, it's, it's again polynomial in the bit complexity, right? So, so uh, what happens is that they they will generate an LP with you know n variables that has astronomically huge coefficients, like astronomically astro like more than double exponentially big, yeah. uh, and um, and for this particular uh, LP the number of steps that any path following method will take uh, is going to be two to the dimension. Right, like you can make L as big as you want, right? And uh, like no, nothing stops uh, L from going to infinity in um, L being the bit description length, right? So if the bit description length goes to infinity, the number of steps can also go to infinity. Te yeah, I mean, that's kind of weird to state it in terms of the dimension. No, it's better, right? Like it's like I'm, I'm basically saying that that uh, I, well, I don't know. Like uh, depends on the why is it? I mean, because you're kind of making the bit complexity depend on the dimension. That's how you're getting the result, right? Uh, yes, but the point is then, if let's say if you were strongly polynomial, you wouldn't care. The number of iterations wouldn't care about the, the how horrible the numbers are, right? So it should be like you know, I would like the you know. Like maybe I have to invert really badly conditioned matrices, but I only take n cube steps. Right? That's what you would like love to see. And what they're saying is, if you're following exactly the central path in some neighborhood of the central path, and your steps are are, are linear, so like you're basically trying to approximate the central path as a, uh, using a piecewise linear approximation of it, um, you cannot do that without two to the dimension many pieces. Uh, that's what the result is. Um, so, so this is this is a hard limit. Uh, uh, I was very interesting if, or if it, I would be very interested if uh, uh, these kind of uh, layered least squares, which I haven't yet talked about, actually hits that limit. But uh, we don't know. Okay. Uh, what do I want to say? Okay. Um, so just briefly about, so I think, I, I mean, I'm going to get to the, the, the definition of the, the new parameter or the different parameter that we, we, we look at uh, and, and sort of not take too much more time. Um, but uh, I mean, some interesting things that you might want to know about, uh, you know, let's say what the, the standard framework uh, these days is for, for LP uh, uh, interior point methods is that, you know, you're trying to follow this path and uh, you, you have essentially two types of steps um, for trying to follow the path. So the different points on the path are, you should think of them, the point on the path is essentially in, indexed by the, uh, like the optimality gap. Um, and uh, you want to decrease the optimality gap quickly, so that, that's basically new. And uh, you have sort of two strategies. One is you kind of try and approximate like the slope. Of the, of the path, so you sort of try and shoot down it as quickly as possible. And that's what's known as a predictor step. And then the other step is, you know, you, you, you sort of did a piecewise linear approximation of the path, you may have shot off, uh, like, uh, you know, in, in, I mean, almost the right direction, but not quite the right direction. So here you kind of got a little bit off of it. And so then you do a corrector step to push yourself back onto the path. And then you iterate this. Um, and uh, I mean, there are standard analyses of these things uh, that sort of tell you like what the multiplicative decrease is that you can always guarantee for uh, predictor steps in terms of how much you shrink the, the optimality gap. Uh, and these corrector steps, uh, you only need one of them to get back to the path. Uh, so that they're, 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 there's not much interesting as far as, you know, from a theoretical perspective, apart from trying to compute these steps more quickly, I don't know very many interesting like theoretical questions about corrector steps, but predictor steps are, are sort of where things get uh, fun. 
because you you want to you want to really know how well you can approximate you know the the, 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 the kind of slope of the central path. Um, okay. So uh, let's see. Yeah. So you have uh, these. Um, yeah. Let me let me skip this. I, uh, one one thing that's nice is that this is a a, a cool animation that looks at the, the, the variables uh, in the primal and the dual and that was made by, uh, by Bento. Uh, so in case you like visualizations, so here what we have is that the, the product of the primal and dual variables is always uh, some fixed mu. Um, and if you kind of iterate this, so these are the different iterations of the interior point method. Um, and sort of at some point, you kind of see you know, where uh, you know, the primal variables are, are going to be active and where the dual variables are going to be active and it starts to become apparent um, from the fact that, you know, the, these are very big, these are tiny, these are very big, these are tiny, and uh, at some point you can sort of guess where the optimal solutions uh, should be from this picture. Right? So that's maybe slightly useful. Um, okay, I just want to say what the, the uh, uh, yeah, I, I, so this is the first time I, I gave this talk, so I didn't time it, obviously. Um, so I want to say what the other condition parameter is that we, that we use and that allows you to um, uh, understand this chi bar in, uh, in, a, in a different way that is combinatorial and much, much easier to work with. Um, so this is, this is the combinatorial version of chi bar. Uh, and um, um, you, you, you work with circuits, so people who, who like combinatorics should like circuits. Um, and what is, a, what is a circuit in this case? It's just a subset of, uh, of columns that form a minimal linear dependency. Um, and uh, 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 so, so the, these, these are the, the circuits of the you know, linear matroid induced by A. And uh, what you can look at is um, <coughs> this following parameter that depends on two indices. So you basically look at all the circuits that um, sort of are, are supported on uh, i and j, or that contain i and j on their support. And you look at the worst case ratio of the actual value of that circuit uh, between the i and j uh, component. Um, so you, you, you find a vector G whose support uh, is, you know, induces a minimal linear dependency, or a G that induces a minimal linear dependency of A, and you look at the ratio between the jth coordinate and the ith coordinate. Okay? And you maximize this uh, over all circuits uh, that support I and J. And this is what we call the sort of circuit imbalance measure between I and J. And then there's the global circuit imbalance measure, which is um, the, the worst case imbalance that you will see over any pair of coordinates. Okay. Um, and this is where I was mentioning that if, if, you're, if you're starting with a totally unimodular matrix, um, this parameter is exactly one. And, and this you can already see with like network uh, matrices. The circuits are exactly uh, cycles, uh, and uh, uh, and obviously if you have some of the edges of the cycle, then you just need to add the other edges essentially, and those other edges will only have you know the, the same you will have the same value on every edge, so this will always be one. But do you need Seymour's theorem to prove this? No, 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 no. This is uh, because what you said is just for network matrices. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I mean, more, 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 more generally, uh, uh, just. Um, uh, uh, it's like you're inverting a TU matrix at some point. A minimal linear dependency is like your yeah. It, it's, it's it's yeah. It's not very uh, very good. Um, or your its subdeterminants uh, are the coefficients of the circuit space. Um, and so it turns out that this parameter is, for all, all intents and purposes, exactly the same as 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 chi bar. Um, and uh, uh, is, is much, much easier to work with. Um, in particular, it's easy to understand what happens when you uh, apply a diagonal transformation. 
sort of if you apply a diagonal transformation, if I multiply g by lambda and I multiply I, uh, g by lambda j and g i by lambda i, then you know the ratio just comes out. Right? So it's it's much much easier to understand what happens here. Um, and you you start to also see like obstructions uh, in a very simple way to um, having a, a small um, kappa parameter, so this circuit imbalance measure. So here we'd like a, a subspace where uh, uh, it turns out that in, 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 in this context, both of these vectors that span the subspace are actually circuits. They're support minimal. Um, and it's sort of clear that if I, you know, want to try and decrease, if I want to try and like multiply by a diagonal transformation which somehow makes m smaller and keeps this guy the same, then I'm going to make this ratio worse. And if I try and like make m small, uh, this guy smaller while keeping this guy the same, then I'm going to make this guy worse. Right? Um, and so you can actually formalize this very simply uh, using the uh, sort of notion of, of cycles inside the sort of directed graph associated with these kappa parameters. So in, in essence, um, what happens is that every, if you look at any cycle, um, if I apply the, uh, uh, if I apply a diagonal transformation, which essentially does this to all the parameters, to all the cycle parameters, uh, they will cancel themselves out. Uh, and this allows you to get uh, sort of a combinatorial characterization of this parameter, which in essence what it is, is it turns out that this kappa star parameter is exactly um, uh, the, 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 the geometric mean of the heaviest cycle. I mean, it's the log, the, if you take the log of this, this is like the maximum arithmetic, uh, the, the maximum mean weight cycle um, in, uh, in a graph. And so, you know, using this characterization is actually how we're able to get our, uh, our rescaling uh, out. Um, okay. So maybe, maybe I'll, 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 I'll stop. I'll stop. It's a nice one. Is it also how you establish hardness? Uh, I actually, I, I, uh, so hard? hardness, I believe, uh, was established by Tung Sal by somehow reducing to the problem of computing the minimum non-zero, like you, you somehow look at the sub-matrix of minimum non-zero determinant. This uh, is for the chi bar? Yeah, or? yeah. It's, it's somehow like, uh, yeah, the minimum non-zero determinant is uh, in absolute value is somehow an impossible quantity to compute, and uh, and this was proved by uh, uh, Hachian actually, uh, and Tung Sao reduced hardness of computing chi bar to this. Um, I mean, in particular, what this tells you is that even computing the value of a single one of these edges is NP hard. Uh, a single, for a single cycle or edge? Edge. So like computing this value, like the wor I, I, oh, find, I need to find, uh, yeah, this, the worst case circuit that, is, that supports five and six, uh, that, that, that will be NPR. Um, yeah. Okay. Other questions? Okay, let's thank Daniel. <laughs> As usual, there are refreshments in uh, the comments room, right down the corridor. Everybody signed the sheet.